She tried to get me out of the room. It was too patent. But I said it was so quiet and empty and clean now that I believed I would lie down again and sleep all I could, and not to wake me even for dinner. I would call when I woke. So now she is gone, and the servants are gone, and the things are gone, and there is nothing left but that great bedstead nailed down with the canvas mattress we found on it. We shall sleep downstairs tonight and take the boat home tomorrow. I quite enjoy the room now it is bare again. How those children did tear about here! This bedstead is fairly gnawed, but I must get to work. I have locked the door and thrown the key down into the front path. I don't want to go out, and I don't want to have anybody come in till John comes. I want to astonish him. I've got a rope up here that even Jenny did not find. If that woman does get out and tries to get away, I can tie her. But I forgot I could not reach far without anything to stand on. This bed will not move. I tried to lift and push it until I was lame, and then I got so angry I bit off a little piece at one corner, but it hurt my teeth. Then I peeled off all the paper I could reach standing on the floor. It sticks horribly, and the pattern just enjoys it. All those strangled heads and bulbous eyes and waddling fungus growths just shriek with derision. I am getting angry enough to do something desperate. To jump out of the window would be admirable exercise, but the bars are too strong even to try. Besides, I wouldn't do it. Of course not. I know well enough that a step like that is improper and might be misconstrued. I don't like to look out of the windows even. There are so many of those creeping women and they creep so fast. I wonder if they all came out of that wallpaper as I did. But I am securely fastened now by my well-hidden rope. You don't get me out in the road there. I suppose I shall have to get back behind that pattern when it comes night, and that is hard. It is so pleasant to be out in this great room and creep around as I please. I don't want to go outside. I won't, even if Jenny asks me to. For outside, you have to creep on the ground, and everything is green instead of yellow. But here I can creep smoothly on the floor, and my shoulder just fits in that long smooch around the wall. So I cannot lose my way. Why, there's John at the door. It is no use, young man. You can't open it. How he does call and pound. Now he's crying for an axe. It would be a shame to break down that beautiful door. John, dear, said I in the gentlest voice, the key is down by the front steps, under a plantain leaf. That silenced him for a few moments. Then he said, very quietly indeed, open the door, my darling. I can't, said I. The key is down by the front door under a plantain leaf. And then I said it again, several times, very gently and slowly, and said it so often that he had to go and see. And he got it, of course, and came in. He stopped short by the door. What is the matter? he cried. For God's sake, what are you doing? I kept on creeping just the same, but I looked at him over my shoulder. I've got out at last, said I, in spite of you and Jane. And I pulled off most of the paper, so you can't put me back. Now why should that man have fainted? But he did, and right across my path by the wall, so that I had to creep over him every time.